So what's good straw gang and welcome back to another video. Now as you guys can tell by the title and the thumbnail, I'm going to be covering everything in this game that a beginner player should know and needs to know. So I'm going to be covering the basics, just scratching the surface of Warzone as a whole. So if you're a regular player, you're an experienced player, you probably won't benefit anything from this. So I thought I'd just mention that because yeah, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to bring up, you probably already know about or you probably already do in game. And for anyone who wants to see what I'm going to be covering and skipping to certain things, there is actually video chapters on the timeline down below and also timestamps in the pinned comment if you you want to skip to certain things so if you guys go on to enjoy the video don't forget to leave a like i'd really appreciate that hit that red sub button down below with post notifications on so you don't miss any future content coming your way so starting out with the absolute basics of basics we're going to be taking a look at the controller settings now this isn't actually my controller it's just a spare one that i grabbed so i didn't have to unplug mine we're going to be starting off with the br button layout so this is basically your stick and move flip we've got default tactical all these types of things to let you know what i'm rocking i have to unplug it anyway basically i have control freaks on my controller controller I have a precision ring and then I also have uh, some PS4 back paddles. So these two here, I actually only use one and I'm going to talk about that and explain uh, why. So to start off with the button layout, I've gone with stick and move flipped. So two reasons. First of all, stick and move flipped allows you to use your right analog stick to jump and then X to melee instead of X to jump and your analog stick to melee. What this allows you to do is just keep your, uh, your, keep your finger on the analog stick when you jump shot so you don't have to move it from X and then jump shot and you know take it, take it off the analog stick. Stick and move flipped will actually allow you to use the top two triggers instead of the bottom two here and basically it's just faster reaction time you know with these you have to actually like hold on wait for it to focus you have to press them down see so you press it press it press it with these two you just tap it it's an instant reaction you tap it tap it even if you don't want to use stick and move flip using just default flipped as well would help if you if you actually can yeah you can use default flip so go with that if you want but stick and move will help a lot as well i personally don't mess around with the stick layout i keep it default as well as the invert vertical look you don't want that dead zone is based on your controller uh condition whether it's old whether it's new you can find that out whether you actually get stick drift or not now for sensitivity this is yet another personal preference thing sensitivity for me is high 77 with a 0.8 ADS so basically the higher you go with the vertical and horizontal the lower you want to be with the ADS sensitivity so if you go all the way to a 20 20 cents on both ideally you'd want like 0.6 ADS and basically that will allow you to just have a lot of control over your aim with having a high sensitivity so being able to turn on people a lot and just you know get those reactions and those things that you wouldn't be able to do normally with a 77 sense so the next important controller setting is going to be the aim response curve type now I can't in depth explain these and what they specifically do but it's pretty well known that dynamic is a setting that most experienced and regular players use standard it would definitely fit for beginner players a lot better so onto some more important controller settings we're going to be taking a look at the use slash reload behavior as well as the slide behavior so first of all with use slash reload when you boot up warzone for the first time i'm pretty sure it's going to be on tap to reload you absolutely want to immediately change that to contextual tap because what this allows you to do is pretty much just pick up loot weapons ammo whatever it may be by just simply tapping next up we have slide behavior so when you boot up warzone for the first time it's going to be on hold you want to change this to tap because basically when you want to be sliding around corners slide cancelling all that type of stuff you actually have to hold circle instead of just tapping it right so you have to hold it and then you slide instead of just tapping it you'll slide instantly so so something else i really think i should cover in the controller settings department is going to be the automatic sprint now assuming that you've never played warzone before i think this is something you should start on early instead of later on down the road because it'll be harder to do in a couple months than if you just did it straight away and that's how you already know to play so when you boot up the game you will be on disabled for automatic sprint now for slide cancelling for movement advanced movement as well down the road automatic tactical sprint will help you a lot basically what it allows you to do is move your left analog stick forward instead of having to click it in so if you do have stick drift or issues with clicking in your analog i know all of my controllers have that issue except for the one i'm using so if you do have that issue automatic tactical sprint will be helping you out a lot and that'll really help with movement slide cancelling and other advanced things later on down the road auto tax sprint is also included in a later part of the video so if you want to follow along step by step with exactly what i'm doing just enable it for this video and you know kind of get uh, get your feet wet with using it all right so onto the audio tab we're going to be starting off with the audio mix i highly recommend for any type of player actually to be using boost low i see people using boost high and boost they'll make your ears bleed they will absolutely 
they will destroy your ears, all right? So boost low will allow you to have a good uh, mix of everything across the board. You'll, you'll be able to, well, I was gonna say, you'll be able to hear footsteps, but. <laughs> all right, so now that we've covered the basics for controller settings, we're gonna head on to the class setups and loadouts. The best setups for you to use as a beginner player, no matter what type of skill level you are, these classes were the best to use and will help you the most in your gunfights and getting started in Verdansk. So here we are, I've laid out my five top classes for a beginner player, and I've tried to add as much variety as I can between assault rifles and SMG. Geez. We're going to be starting off with the Farah 83. This is an absolutely very dominant assault rifle right now, has such low recoil, very easy to control. The first attachment is going to be the standard suppressor. Next is the 18.7 Spetsnaz RPK barrel, as well as the Axial Arms 3x optic, Spetsnaz grip, and the Spetsnaz 60 round mag yet again. It's a top assault rifle right now, definitely something you want to be using. So for the SMG in this class, I'm going to be using the LC-10. What I'm going to be using for this class is going to be the standard sound suppressor, as well as the SVOD speed grip, the Salvo 52 round fast mag, as well as the Airborne Elastic Wrap and the SAS Combat Stock. This will give you a very good balance of movement, recoil control and overall just speed for an SMG and you know good handling, good ADS, all that type of stuff. Coming in at the number two spot for my assault rifle, I'm going to be rocking the Krieg 6. Yet again, another very easy to control assault rifle with absolutely no recoil. Going to be the standard sound suppressor, the CMV mill spec barrel, axial arms three times, field agent grip and the Synag 60 round mag. Same attachments as the Farah because most of the assault rifles for long range will have the same attachments. For my secondary and my SMG, it's gonna be the Bullfrog yet again, another very low recoil SMG. This is gonna have the standard sound suppressor as well as the VDV speed grip, 65 round speed mag, grew elastic wrap, and the Spetsnaz PKM stock. Much like the LC-10, this is a very good uh, balance between speed, you know, ADS, recoil, everything like that, handling, just, just across the board, a very well balanced class setup. Class setup number three is gonna be yet again the Farah 83. So I'll just show you guys this and you can run through it. It's gonna be the same attachments for both assault rifles. The SMG, however, is gonna be the MAC-10, one of the absolute top best SMGs for a beginner player to be using, got the standard sound suppressor as well as the SVOD speed grip, 53 round drum, Tiger Team Spotlight and the SAS Combat Stock. Once again, I'll always be doing my best to make a nice balanced class setup that'll give you good ADS speed, good recoil control, handling, movement speed, all that type of stuff. And this is definitely a perfect class setup. For the fourth class setup, like I said, attachments for the Krieg and Farah are going to be the same. So yet again, you can pause it and take the attachments. But however, for the secondary, I'm going to be rocking a modern warfare weapon this time. This is going to be the OG MP5. For this class setup, I have the monolithic integral suppressor, Merc foregrip, tack laser, 45 round mags, and the stippled grip tape. This is such a such a good SMG, very well balanced, low recoil, does a lot of damage. I have nothing else to say about it, right? It stood the test of time, one of the most popular, long-lasting meta SMGs within Warzone. And last but not least, for the final class setup, I'm finally going to be including an assault rifle class as an SMG, and that is going to be the FFAR, right? The Fafar. For this class setup, we have the standard sound suppressor, SFOD speed grip, the Tiger Team Spotlight, as well as the Snag 50 round mag, and the Airborne Elastic Wrap. You could either trade Airborne for uh, SMG, SAS combat, whichever you feel better with. I like using, you know, both of them and switching between both of them. And that's pretty much the five classes I have, man. These are the five best that you could use right now. The assault rifles stay the same, but as for the secondaries, lots of different variety here for you to choose from, and even an AR as an SMG as well. And that is going to wrap up the top five class setups for a beginner player. So with having covered the best controller settings, as well as the top five classes for beginner players, I'm now going to be moving over to Plunder, showing you some basic movement and, you know, just kind of the ins and outs and scratch the surface with that because that's an important thing to know as well so with that being said let's jump into it so finally here i am in plunder as you can also see i went and got a controller overlay on screen so i don't have to hold my controller in front of the camera to try and show you what buttons i'm pressing when i'm pressing them it just kind of makes them easier for you to understand the sequence i'm pressing them you know the timing all that type of stuff like it's just it's just generally easier now the best part about this for me personally is that i don't have to explain it the way i normally would this controller overlay is going to help a lot so first of all the slide cancel is very, very simple. All you have to do is press your analog stick forward because, you know, you're on auto attack sprint, right? And all you gotta do is press your analog stick forward, double tap circle, and then jump. So forward, double tap circle, forward, double tap circle, jump. Forward, double tap circle, jump. Double tap R3, double tap R3. 
forward double tap R3. And not only is this very helpful for gunfights and actually getting in engagements, but you'll also never run out of tactical sprint. That is like one of the bigger things about this is that you'll always be moving at the maximum speed. Obviously, I'm sure, you know, there's sometimes you'll mess up your slides and everything like that. I do as well. It's, it just happens. For the most part, if you're not messing up your slides and you're getting the timing right, you will absolutely never run out of tax sprint as you can see. I'm being able to move at the maximum speed 24-7 and this is very, very, very helpful. Now using slide cancel in an actual engagement is another thing. So say someone is sitting in this corner and you know they're there. Instead of just like jumping and just being a sitting standing target for them to easily shoot, you'll want to, you know, hit them with a little like that, you know, little so that's helpful as well because it's just, you're not just like, you know, slowly ADS walking where they can just completely blast you or just jump and stand still. You know, you're, you're hitting with a little slide cans, like a little, you know, hit them with a little, a little bunny hop. Of course, that's, you know, what we're, not what we're looking at right now, but a little slide cans. What f***ing weirdo? But yeah, it's just very helpful to quickly, you know, slide in and slide out. Slide in. Slide in, slide out. All right, so the next thing that I want to quickly cover with you guys is recoil control. This is something that a lot of people have a misconception about in Call of Duty and seem to think you've got above average recoil control and aim, you're cheating. That's kind of the general consensus nowadays, you know, but for recoil control, right, going into plunder to practice this is the easiest way to do it. So basically, as you can see, I'm ADSing at a wall here and I'm going to let this MP5 go through the whole 40 round drum without trying to control the recoil at all. So if I just shoot it and let it go through the whole 40 round drum, as you can see, the MP5's recoil is really interesting, like it'll recoil up and then just sit at the same spot. But then if I just simply pull down on my analog stick just a little bit while I'm firing, you will see that the recoil, you know, completely changes. Look at that. Look at, look at how concentrated and controlled this is compared to uh, the other one where I didn't control the recoil. Look at this. This is not me controlling it. This is me not controlling it, I mean. Does this bozo really want to do this? Hey bozo. I don't know why you're I don't know why you're coming at me for. But yes, as you can see, not controlling it, controlling it. Same thing goes with the FFAR. I'll let it go through its whole clip. Both patterns for the MP5 and the FFAR pretty much go all just the way up. This goes, you know, a little bit up to the left and then off the right on an angle this one goes completely straight up so that's why the mp5 is a lot easier to control because all you literally do is pull down if it's going up you pull it down to counter it okay now with the fafa i'll control the recoil as you can see very very low concentrated easy to control uh recoil pattern you know, like, it's it's simple, really. It's so simple. People just don't get it nowadays. I'll go ahead and do it with the Groza, for example, as well. Yet again, not control the recoil, let it go through its whole clip. Similar to the MP5, it kind of it recoiled a bit and then just got to a point where it didn't move at all. And then I'll go right next to it and control it. And once again, very controlled, concentrated, and then, you know. And that is going to conclude the movement and recoil control segment. So now that we've covered all of the most important things for Warzone and really scratched the surface and ran through the basics, you know, looking at controller settings, class setups, movement, all of that type of stuff, we are now going to be heading onto Vedansk, as you can see, and I'm going to be running you guys through some of the most important do's and don'ts that I see so many casual players doing that, you know, just don't really make the game any better for you, and that are actually going to get you killed a lot more. So in the gameplay right here, you guys will see me swiftly flying down through the scavenger here as someone else is trying to go for it as well. I actually screamed thinking he was going to go for it, because one thing about scavengers, man, is that there's either going to be a lot of people around those areas, or there will be multiple people going for them, so make sure that you are the first to get it, because you could have other people going for it as well which is what happened to me quite a few times but scavengers are pretty damn handy to get at the start of a game because not only will they allow you to get a lot of loot a lot of cash while you're going and collecting all of the crates there's three in total so you get the contract and you have to collect three randomly placed crates and at the end of it you get a cash reward as well as a satchel which is very very helpful and will basically just allow you to get in a few gunfights you know pick a few people off early game and then get that loadout you know the satchel the money all that type of stuff and go off and get your kills another important thing to remember is putting a trophy system on your vehicle is crucial for moving around the map because there will be so many little rats in there you know their windows and on top of rooftops and everything like that that will be waiting for people to drive past with their rpgs c4s whatever it may be and if you have a trophy system on 
it will save you so much so please don't forget if you have a trophy system to use it for your vehicle so two very important don'ts is one do not go for recon contracts i see so many casual players and newer players doing this because nine times out of ten when i do kill, kill people that go for these contracts they aren't very good at the game they're not very aware of what's going on they kind of just they're just sitting there not doing a lot right if you happen to not know what a recon contract is basically it's a contract where you go to this little satellite type of thing on the ground and usually open areas it puts a red beam of light up in the sky to let everyone know that you're there and they usually don't actually benefit you in any type of way especially when there's a scavenger where you can get more cash from that as well as a satchel so now as you can see in the gameplay here when i go to purchase my loader i don't just chuck it out in the middle of the open where there's four different rooftops where people can wait for the loadout to you know fly in and then kill me when i go to grab it i always put it in the nearest building where i can go to the rooftop or stand inside to grab it from the roof that's a, a key thing to do because i can't say how many times i've been sniped or i've been you know just camped someone sitting on a head glitch someone in a window or a rooftop that's waited for it to come down and just kills me as soon as I grab it. The next thing that I still don't understand why people do is grabbing most wanted in solos. They have absolutely no purpose in solos. Usually what most wanted are for is if you're playing duos, trios or quads, they allow you to get your teammate back. I think you have to wait about three, three minutes and you pretty much just drive around in a heli or any vehicle. And if you wait that three minutes, you get a bit of cash, I think. But any of the teammates that are dead, you get them back as well with that. So there's literally no teammates to bring back in solos and they only give you like a thousand dollars I think but what's even worse than a yellow beam of light shooting up in the sky telling everyone where you are it'll actually show a red crown on the on anyone's mini map who's near you and even like on the other side of the map as well you can see them from any distance but even worse you can actually ping these most wanted so if someone's in a building right in downtown you want to know what level they're specifically on you pull up your tech map you ping the most wanted and it'll literally tell you what level they're on and it'll update as they're moving so in solo specifically these have have absolutely no purpose and they're just not uh, a beneficial thing for you to grab now the last thing i personally want to cover and on behalf of a lot of the community as well is please just don't camp all right like i know you're a new player you know you're trying to get your feet wet with the game you know you're trying to get a feel for it and everything like that let me tell you right now camping as a beginner player as a new player as a casual player if you want to actually get better at the game and improve that is not the way to go about it camping at the top of any building at a rooftop with a sniper all that type of stuff all it is doing is first of all it's really boring like who seriously enjoys doing that second of all you're not actually improving you're not getting in gunfights you're not experiencing doing a certain thing wrong and then learning from that and being able to correct that mistake next time you know if you rush someone if you were too aggressive you don't get to experience that because you're not doing anything in the first place you're sitting at the top of a ladder a rooftop whatever it may be sitting in a window camping a buy a store like camping as a player who wants to improve will absolutely get you nowhere so just just please refrain from doing it if you can obviously i camp in certain situations as well when it's actually necessary if, if i need to in a gunfight and that's what will get me alive or, or keep me alive but when people do it all game and they end up in top five with two kills i get four or five kills when i land in the you know the the landing area right like i'm getting more kills in the first like couple minutes of the game than you get in a whole like whole warzone match so we finally made it to the end of this warzone beginner's guide if you're still watching to the end of the video i really appreciate you tuning in this far because this has been one of the longest videos i've uploaded in a very long time i put a lot of work into putting all of this stuff together and really nailing down things that i thought should help you if you're a beginner and a starter player if you want a part two show the video some support leave a comment down below drop a like i really appreciate that let me know you want to see a part two of this and i'll take it up a next level thank you so much for watching i'm going to end it here i'm going to stop talking i'll catch you on the next one have a great day everybody and i'm out